Today on Rappler. A party list lawmaker says three embassy officials are prostituting overseas Filipino workers in the Middle East. Survey firms blast the Commission on Elections for threatening to sue over the non-disclosure of funders. And whistleblower Edward Snowden promises more exposés about the U.S. government's secret surveillance program. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. Akbayan Representative Walden Bello says three embassy officials allegedly sexually abused overseas Filipino workers in the Middle East. Bello, chair of the House Committee on Overseas Workers Affairs, identifies the officials as Mario Antonio, an assistant labor attaché in Jordan, Blas Marquez of the Philippine Overseas Labor Office in Kuwait, and Akim from the Foreign Affairs Department in Syria. Bello accuses Antonio and Marquez of running prostitution rings in Jordan and Kuwait. Kim was supposedly caught in, quote, an intimate act with a female OFW at an embassy shelter. Bello says his information came from, quote, unimpeachable sources at the Foreign Affairs Department and the Labor Department. Bello says he discovered the incidents during a probe on sex for flight schemes in the Middle East. He says the activities are an open secret. I'm asking Secretary Del Rosario and Secretary Baldos to move immediately to recall the three officials that we have identified, dismiss them from government service, and criminally prosecute them. Responding to the sex for flight scheme in the Middle East, DFA spokesperson Raul Hernandez says they have not received any report or complaint from alleged victims. In a text message, Hernandez says DFA Secretary Del Rosario will meet with Bello tomorrow, quote, to, com with complete, to complete the information and move the investigation forward. Our social media post of the day is a Facebook comment from NJ Maldito. He says, quote, What a shame. Embassy is supposed to be the refuge of our dear OFWs, especially in the Middle East where distress and uncertainty is rampant. These so-called predators should be tried and given just punishment. Survey firms, social weather stations, and Pulse Asia blast the commissions on elections about a threat to sue them for not divulging who funds their polls. In a joint statement, the two firms criticized Comelec Chair Sixto Brillantes for, quote, threatening to file criminal charges against them by not, for not complying with Comelec Resolution 9674, which requires survey firms to divulge their funders three days from receipt of the resolution. Brillantes issues the supposed threat in a report by the Philippine Daily Inquirer Sunday. But SWS and Pulse Asia say they have not yet received the resolution. They add, the period to comply with resolution number 9674 has not begun. So what defiance is Chair Brillantes talking about? The survey firms also oppose the resolution, saying it is, quote, oppressive and unconstitutional. Justifying the resolution, Brillantes refers to the Fair Elections Act, which says firms that publish surveys during the election period should divulge their funders. The Office of the Presidential Advisor on the Peace Process says talks with former rebel group Moro National Liberation Front are not new negotiations. Peace Advisor Secretary Teresita Dele says the planned meeting with the MNLF is a tripartite review of the status of the implementation of the 1996 Final Peace Agreement. Deles makes the clarification after Dallas clarifies this after a representative of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front asks why the government calls the meeting with the MNLF a negotiation when it was previously considered a conversation. Statement comes as talks between the MILF and the government stall because of disagreements about power, sharing, and wealth. It will be a rainy week ahead for many parts of the Philippines because of the combined effects of the southwest monsoon and tropical storm Emong. State Weather Bureau Pagasa says the storm moves east of Luzon. The storm's center is 470 kilometers east of Tugigarao City, Cagayan. It has maximum sustained winds of 65 kilometers per hour near the center and gustiness of up to 80 kilometers per hour. Metro Manila, Central Luzon, Mimaropa, Calabar Zone, Bicol Region, and Visayas will experience cloudy skies with moderate to heavy rain showers and thunderstorms, which may trigger flash floods and landslides. The rest of the country will be cloudy with light to moderate rain showers and thunderstorms. Among is expected to exit the Philippine area of responsibility Thursday morning. 
U.S. whistleblower Edward Snowden warns more leaks are on the way after exposing a secret widespread government data surveillance program which he insists threatens the privacy of millions. Snowden, who is now in Hong Kong with secret documents, vows to expose more details about how U.S. agents spy on private email messages and web traffic. Snowden says truth is coming and it cannot be stopped. U.S. President Barack Obama's administration partially confirmed Snowden's allegations by defending the programs. He says these are vital to protecting U.S. citizens from terrorism. Snowden claims almost any intelligence analyst with access to the U.S. National Security Agency Signals database could target almost anyone's email messages or phone metadata. Snowden says these agents have access to IP addresses, raw data, content, and attachments. He says they can enter and get results for anything they want. Snowden says the communications of Americans were collected and consulted on a daily basis, excusing it as, quote, incidental collection. He adds, warrants are rarely audited. The government opens a criminal probe into Snowden's acts. The former NSA contractor dismisses allegations he's a traitor. Snowden says, all I can say right now is the U.S. government is not going to be able to cover this up by jailing or murdering me. In his latest disclosure, he reveals the British government bugged leaders at a previous G20 summit. The European Space Agency approves the construction of a new space telescope to help scientists search for dark energy and dark matter. The high-end Euclid telescope is scheduled to launch on a Russian Soyuz rocket from Europe's spaceport in French Guiana in 2020. Over a period of six years, Euclid will map the 3D distribution of up to 2 billion galaxies. The telescope will help scientists search for dark energy and dark matter. It will survey about half of the sky and look back in time up to 10 billion light years. Scientists say dark energy has an effect on the universe's expansion. Dark matter is invisible material and can only be detected through its gravitational effect on visible matter. The mission is expected to cost $798 million. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number four, Singapore urges Indonesia to take urgent measures to tackle its forest fires as severe air pollution from Sumatra chokes the densely populated city-state. Singapore's Pollutant Standards Index soars to 152 Monday evening, well past the officially designated unhealthy threshold of 100. It's Singapore's worst haze reading since 2006 when the index reached 150. Parts of neighboring Malaysia also suffer from the smoky haze, a recurring problem. Southeast Asian governments failed to solve this despite repeated calls for action. At number five, Egypt and Ethiopia are in a tug of war over the Nile River after Ethiopia began to change the river's course by displacing it several hundred meters at the end of May. The move angers Egypt, raising fears about future water supplies. The Egyptians see the river as a gift from God, cradle of the ancient Egyptian civilization. But Ethiopia, where most of the river's water originates, also wants to use the river and it's been planning a huge dam for years. Egypt depends on the Nile for 98% of its water and water is an increasingly short supply. And at number eight, on Monday, the late Steve Jobs took center stage in the latest twist in the Apple antitrust trial on eBooks. A federal court attempts to read unsent email messages Jobs addressed to Eddie Q, an Apple senior vice president assigned to negotiate e-book contracts with major publishers in late 2009 and early 2010 before the launch of the iPad. Though the email messages were not sent, government prosecutors argue these help establish a pattern of Apple serving as a ringleader in a conspiracy with publishers forcing the retail book industry to adopt higher prices for e-books. For the full top 10, visit rapper.com's The Wrap. Market research firm International Wine and Spirit Research, or IWSR, says Filipinos are the world's biggest gin drinkers. The report says an average Filipino consumes 1.4 liters of gin every year. The global gin market sells about 440 million liters a year. The U.S. and Spain are the next biggest gin markets. The report says the fondness of Filipinos for drinking gin is mainly because of effective marketing and distribution efforts of the largest brand, Ginebra San Miguel. The company reports 13.9 billion pesos of alcoholic product sales in 2012 and 2.95 billion pesos in the first quarter of 2013. The Philippines has long been considered the world's largest gin market, accounting for about half of global sales. 
Every story on Rappler has its own mood meter. It gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page that crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that have affected our readers the most. These 10 stories have gotten the most votes on their mood meter. If you take a look today, it is a green day. And what's interesting is five out of the 10 stories on the mood navigator are about Pugad Baboy. <laughs> All of them are green. Story with the largest number of not votes on the mood meter, Pugad Baboy, your balls are missing. 20% amused, 74% happy. All this green leading to the mood of the day. Today, most people are happy. Well, that's Rappler's newscast for today, Tuesday, June 18th, 2013. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.